Hello. Well, in this film, I'm going to show you some of the adjustments on the Bell Knife Skiving Machine. It's got lots of, sort of knobs and controls on it, and it looks a bit daunting, but actually, it's quite easy to adjust for your thickness of leather, your angle of skiving cut, and your depth of skiving cut. So, I'll take you through some of the basics and hopefully demystify what looks a bit daunting at first sight. And you'll have perfect, lovely skives. Well, this is my skiving machine, and when you look at it, I must say, when I first got it, I thought, oh wow, there are all these sort of controls, and it's all a bit confusing. The most important ones are the slidey bar at the back here. I'll move the camera around in a minute to show you. But this basically does the depth of your skive. So, if, whether you want like a half inch skive or an inch skive, you move this bar backwards and forwards. So here's a close-up view. There's a little reading scale here. And I say all you do is you line the lever up and then you can feed it through. So if I put my foot on the starting pedal, so I've removed that safety cover just to make it a lot clearer for you. So switch on, foot on pedal, and the lever gets dragged through. A bit of a funny angle because I'm behind a camera here, but hopefully there we are, you'll get the idea. Boom. And like that, I've taken off a skive, which is roughly the distance that I've got marked off on the scale. So as I say, slide out further, backwards or forwards, depending on how deep a skive you want going backwards or forwards. So that's probably the, one of the most important adjustments you're going to make. Another adjustment is actually on top of the machine. So I'll bring the camera back. So on top of the machine is this like thumb screw, which you can adjust either way to raise or lower the foot. So the foot is the curved bit of metal that the lever will pass under as it's being skived. So if you have a very thin bit of lever, you want to lower the foot. If you have a very thick bit of leather, you want to make it come up. So you adjust this knob according to the thickness of the leather you have. So again, I'll zoom in. So what you want underneath this foot is enough gap for your leather to get so sort of cut and to pass under. If the, if the foot is too high, then your lever won't feed through. If it's too low, you'll either hit the driving stone or you'll get a very, very thin bit of lever skiving. So it's a little bit trial and error, adjusting that top screw to raise or lower this foot. And if I just turn it a few times, you may be able to see the foot going up there. And ditto, if I turn it the other way, you can probably just about see it coming down. So then when it's running, if it doesn't cut quickly and easily, I make it a little bit lower, a very fine adjustment. There you are. So if I didn't want that to be quite so thin, but that's very thin, I'd just increase the height of this foot a little by adjusting that top screw. Now the third main adjustment screw is this one here at the back. So if I just come out a bit, you can see where it is on the machine. So adjusting this screw will shift the position of that foot. I'm turning it, you can see the foot coming down. Equally it affects obviously where the heel of that foot goes as well. So you can vary whether you have a sort of fairly flat edge to your skive or whether you have like an angle. If you're just joining two seams, you probably just want them both angling together. If you want to do a turnover type top seam, you'd probably want it flatter. I'll do an angled seam just to show you an angled sky. So I'll bring the front of his foot up and the heel back and then put some leather through and that will show you an angle. So this is cutting the angle. And what you end up with, you can probably just about see that, very thin at the extreme edge, getting fatter as you come into the leather. 
So it gives you a nice tapered scythe. Which if you're say making a notebook cover or making a bag, you can obviously then join the two pieces together. In fact, let me just do that. If you had two full thicknesses, you'd end up with that. When it's scythed, you can get your seam down nice and slim. I'm not saying you'd want it quite that slim. There are other levers to do other things. So if you have a particularly thick bit of leather, you might want to move the whole of this bell knife in that direction so that there's a more gap between the cutting edge and the foot. And to do that, you turn this crank handle, which is down here. So that's the one with a little silver knob. As you turn that, you can make that wheel's cutting edge move either closer or further from the foot. So if you're doing very thin leather, generally you want the cutting edge to be closer to the foot. If you are doing very thick leather, you'd want to move that whole cutting wheel away from the foot. So that's one more adjustment, is getting the bell knife closer or further from the foot by adjusting it with this little sort of lever here. This knob we used in the film well showed you how to sharpen the bell knife where you wanted to move the cutting stone closer or further. So that's what that one does. And ditto, this was the lever that engaged and disengaged the sharpening stone when you're trying to sharpen your bell knife wheel. I've put a, a film up where I use both of those. Coming across this one sets the angle for getting rid of the waste from inside the bell knife. And then you've got a couple of levers here and another funny lever at the back. Now, these two here, one works a tension spring and they're basically the affect the angle of that feedstone. So as I push on those levers, that whole feedstone is going in and out. That will affect the thickness of your scythe and it will also affect the angle of the feed going through. So it makes that feed wheel grip your material more or less and it can also have an impact on your actual thickness of scythe as well. You'll find once set you shouldn't really have to adjust these two very often. And then finally you've got this lever at the back here which as you push, push or pull it you actually affect the height of the whole feedstone. What it's doing, as I pull on this one, can you see the feedstone there is going up and down? Again, it's affecting the thickness of your scythe, the relative position of your scythe, and you shouldn't have to adjust that very often. These knobs and the one on the end here all affect the positioning of that stone, whether it's close to the cutting edge, far from the cutting edge, and whether it's at an angle. And all of that's done to affect the actual thickness of your scythe relative to the top of your lever. So to recap, the, the main ones really, it's your depth of your scythe, it's the angle of your foot with your adjuster at the back here, and also it's the distance of your foot from your drive stone, which is at the top. It's one of those things with scything machines, once you've got them set up and working, they're great. You can fiddle around for ages trying to get the right setting and fiddling with all the controls. As you do that, you learn what sort of works, doesn't work. It's quite useful from that point of view, but I tend to, once I've got it set for a project, I tend to just leave it all set up nicely and then you know it will work time after time. So obviously when it goes away, when you're using it, safety cover in position. Well, I hope you found that helpful and you won't find a machine perhaps quite so intimidating when you see one and want to use it. I certainly, when I first got mine, I sort of was a bit sort of 
bamboozled to be frank by all the different controls and it took me a while to work out what they are so I thought this film might help you along a bit. Anyway thanks very much for watching and see you in the next film. Bye bye then.